to another session of Jerusalem's Gate. We have a, a sermon today. It's a little uh, different from the breaking news and special reports that you so often uh, uh, hear on Jerusalem's Gate. Uh, we try to bring you the news as quick and as accurate as possible. But uh, today we're going to talk about the. Uh, we're going to do a sermon, and uh, I picked a, a, ser- a st- uh, title that I've used uh, a few times over the years, and I thought it was time to revisit it. It's the uh, basic foundation and the basic trait of being a Christian, and that is the uh, the topic of love and the gift of love. Uh, I tell you, just just thinking about the love that's in the the faith, I tell you, if that doesn't get you excited that uh, you're loved by the Father and by the Son and by the Holy Ghost and all the angels... uh, uh, sing to you uh, when you uh, was converted. It's just really it. It's something else. Uh, you know, I I uh, the I think that other than Jesus, the person that had that had more understanding of love and the importance of love, other than Jesus, was the Apostle Paul. We all know what the Apostle Paul went through. He was beaten. He was whipped with the cat and nine tails many times. He was stoned. And left for dead he was beaten with rods many times he was shipwrecked and lost at sea he had a thorn in his flesh a messenger of satan to torment him yet in all that he penned first corinthians chapter 13 which is uh the best chapter in the whole bible regarding love uh i would recommend uh all y'all studying and meditating on first corinthians chapter 13 especially in these days that we're living in now i i try i'm a big believer in memorizing scripture uh, and meditating on the scripture because I believe that you have to have some of the Bible in your head uh, because there is a war uh, of good and evil that's being fought in the world and it's manifesting itself on on the on earth. Uh, I'll try to uh, memorize it. It's been a while since I uh, memorized it many years ago and I, if I stutter or uh, stumble on my words, please forgive me. <laughs> I ask for your forgiveness if I mess up. But uh, it goes something like this. Uh, though I speak with the tongue of men, and men and angels and have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have fa- all faith that I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and have not love, I, I am nothing. Uh, though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail, where there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether it be a knowledge, it shall vanish away. If I know in part, and I prophesy in part, but when the imperfect, when a imperfect, when a perfect comes, the imperfect is done away. When I was a child, I taught like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see darkly as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Now abideth faith, hope, love, these three. The greatest disease is love. What uh, the Apostle Paul was trying to tell us in 1 Corinthians 13 is that you can have all the spiritual gifts. You can have all the knowledge of heaven and the Bible. Uh, You can know all the mysteries of the Bible. You can have faith that you can remove mountains. You can give away your money, all your money to feed the poor. You can even give your body to be burned in the name of Jesus. But if you do not have love in your heart, you're a nauseating, clingy symbol in God's ears. So that's how much uh, he puts on uh, love. Love is the greatest trait of all uh, traits to have as a Christian. Uh, you know, I, uh, I I was told by a group of us was told something, and I'd like to tell you this, uh, especially for you new Christians or the, those that are thinking about being a Christian. Uh, I had a pastor friend tell a group of us. He said, uh, "Do you know?" that God loves you just as much as he loves Jesus. And when I heard that, people, I was totally blown away. 
it turned my world upside down and gave me a whole new outlook on uh, Christianity and the love that uh, Christianity uh, offers. It's uh, and to think about it, uh, the you that, that each one of you that's listening, God loves you, each and one of y'all that's listening, just as much as He loves Jesus. And uh, if you don't uh, uh, get excited about that, I tell you what, nothing to get you excited. To know that you're loved by the Father just as much as the Father loves the Son. And uh, it, it, it really has, it really revolutionized my uh, life and turned my life upside down. And uh, no, I know to do all things in love. Not claiming perfection now, especially the all new Christians, but a fight of faith uh, in a new direction. Uh, let's go into the scriptures. You know, I like to try to keep my vlogs less than 10 minutes. We just went over 1 uh, Corinthians 13. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all your things be done with uh, charity, which is love. Whenever you see charity in King James Version, it means love. Let all your things be done with uh, charity. Uh, 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. If you have hate in your heart, and you have not love in your heart, you're of not a God, uh, and you're not a Christian. If you have hate, uh, uh, any kind of uh, hatred in your heart, and do not have love, you're not of God, because God is love. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Colossians 3.14. Uh, and above all these things, put on charity, love, which is the bond of perfectiveness. And let's go to John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for us. Uh, you know, I think the scripture has uh, more meanings than what it uh, appears also. I think it means uh, your old life too, uh, before your conversion to Christianity, uh, to put away with your old life. Uh, what does it say? I was crucified. Uh, I was crucified with Christ, nonetheless I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I live now is the faith in Jesus who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, let's go to 3.16. That's the most popular uh, uh, verse, and that goes along with what we were saying about God loving uh, each one of y'all that's listening more, just as much as he loves uh, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, let's go do one more. Uh, 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. He first loved us. God loves us. Even in our sin, he loves us. Before we were converted uh, and uh, the gospel was offered to us, uh, and salvation uh, presented itself to us. Uh, God uh, loved us even when we were deep in sin. And uh, if you can't love God back or Jesus back uh, for you know Calvary and all the you know God giving up His Son for us and uh, the love that God has for everybody that's listening, uh, I don't think you. I don't think you have the capability of loving if you can't get excited about that. Uh, let's go. Let's go one more. I think I got. I got an extra minute. Uh, First John four seven. But love, let us let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Amen on that. Well, I go ahead and close. I I my heart goes out to each and every one of y'all. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper to love thee. And may God bless and protect you all. Amen.